This is going to be another uh, CD update of sorts. Yeah, I still collect CDs, obviously. Alright, I'm going to get straight to it first. I wanted to uh, show you this monstrosity right here. This is a... I can't see because I'm not wearing my glasses, but... This is a uh, box, a CD box set of uh, Joni Mitchell albums. Everything from songs to a, yeah. uh, everything from songs to a, songs to a sequel to Mingus. Uh, Joni Mitchell, if you're not familiar, is a singer-songwriter, really beautiful vocalist, and she put. And from the 60s to kind of sort of like in the mid 2000s, I guess, she put out some really beautiful music. Uh, I, I, I went through all of this in, a, in like a week, and uh, it was an interesting week. Very interesting week. Albeit, these are like the only two of them I didn't really care for much of. Don Juan's Reckless Daughter and uh, Mingus. There's like a. Uh, on that one, there's like a 13 minute long song that doesn't really do much. But if you are trying to get a Journey Mitchell, I definitely recommend this right here. Blue and Corn and Spark. Like, like uh, everything from. Everything from Blue. Like. Chronologically, everything from Blue and Hegira, actually not even that, Lady in the Canyon to Hegira are my favorite, would I, I would say would be my favorite time period for Joni Mitchell. Shame she's in the hospital. She is in her early 70s, I realize that, but it's, none it's nonetheless sad. Okay. Uh, I also got some Flaming Lips CDs. Uh, out of all this, I would say y Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots is my favorite out of this, out of this haul. I love the, uh, I love the third track, Yoshimi Battles the, the, uh, Pink Robots a lot. It just seems so sincere and so innocent and all that. It's, I think it's a well put together track. The rest of this, uh, this goes into a, what's this called? Clouds Taste Metallic. This goes into a more noise, noise pop direction. Whereas this goes into a, a, uh, goes into that psychedelic direction that the Flaming Lips would be better known for on Yoshimi Battle, Battles, the uh, Pink Robots, and this uh, At War with Mystics. It's, it's really, I would say, my favorite Flaming Lips album is actually Embryonic. Which I have on vinyl over there, but uh, this is definitely a, I guess a close, Yoshimi and At War with Mystics are definitely close favorites, and, and the Saw Bolton. This was their more recent one as of like 2013. Uh, the experimentation with Dark Ambient was interesting, but it didn't go as well as I hoped it would. Still, nonetheless a great, a really good album. Get into Flaming Lips if you like space rock, noise rock, psychedelic rock, and just... To me, they're the most in most inventive and interesting band out there right now. Or one of them, most certainly. And finally, in terms of a, album, a series of albums, uh, I finally completed my collection of all, all of High on Fire CDs. At least until the new one comes out in June. Uh, High on Fire, if you're not familiar with them, they're a stoner sludge metal album. This is their debut right here, Art of Self-Defense. It's got a little booklet, which I think is pretty cool. Shows like, I guess it's like pictures of a concert. I guess, I don't know. But, uh, but uh, yeah, after that it's this. Surrounded by Thieves, which was an improvement. And I think this is where they finally found, refined their, found their sound, refined their sound. Bless Black Wings. 
They then I get they then I get they then I guess perfected in Devis's communion, played ar- then played around with production on the one after that, and then there's the various mysteries, which is my favorite of theirs. It's really it's a really good album. I need to I think I'm gonna keep my CD my CD of that, even though I have it on vinyl. Alright. Now for new releases, I only have four I only have four new releases. But, uh, should I go chronologically? Nah, I'm not gonna go chronologically. I'm just gonna, okay. Alabama Shakes is Sound and Color. It's actually good. I don't know about their, I don't know about their debut, but this is an interesting, uh, fusion of garage rock and soul. Southern rock, garage rock, and soul. It's, uh, surprisingly well done. Look. The vocalist reminds me of uh, Amy Whitehouse to an extent. These are um, lyric sheet and all that. Yeah, but yeah, do look into this if you uh, if you if you do like your garage rock to be really soulful. It's definitely one of the most unique rock releases of this year so far. There's a lot of inter- unique rock releases, but that's certainly one of them. Another unique ro- rock rock release, in my opinion. Courtney Barnett's "Sometimes I Sit and Sometimes and th- Sometimes I Sit and Think and Sometimes I Just Sit." Uh, Courtney Barnett, uh, for sure, a very a very creative lyricist and really good performer in terms of guitar. Her vocals are for are very uh I'd say stream of conscious type. Especially on songs like uh, Pedestrian at Best. I need to look into her uh, double EP. A lot of people like that more than this, but uh This is certainly this is certainly an interesting debut rocket interesting debut album for someone you need to pay attention to in terms of the Australian rock scene. That and obviously Tame Impala, but that's a given. All right, I got the uh, the Prodigy's new album, uh, "The Day Is My Enemy." The Prodigy, um, they're a uh, like a some kind of some kind of experimental band. I've heard them described as big beat and rave music. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna like like this one more than their other stuff. Once I start digging into their other stuff, but this is certainly a, a uh, highlight for the year in terms of in terms of electronic electronic music and rave music. I don't know if that's like a if rave is like coming back or anything, but this is certainly an interesting release for that. At least to me, anyway. And, f- and finally, in terms of new releases, <laughs> Death Grips. Death Grips is a. Uh, oh, sorry. Fr- a friend of mine texted me. But, but uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, Death Grips is the powers that be. Yeah, it finally dropped after like so much hype as of like a year ago. Surrounded it. It's like a double album. You got uh, you got, yeah, you got niggas on the moon and Jenny Death, and for some reason the artwork for Jenny Death is not there. I guess something something happened with the packaging. Probably reflecting uh, what what many fans thought would uh, it would not come out. But now that it's out, I guess it's their way of saying, oh, well, it's not really out or whatever. You guys thought it was never going to come out, so no artwork for you, I guess. That's speculation, though. I wholeheartedly recommend Death Grips if you're into industrial hip-hop. Uh, some really some really interesting punk music. Some, like, it's it's out there. This this especially it's out there. I'd start with the money store though, the money store or ex military, which you can download on their website for free. 
Now for some general releases. Um, Tupac's All Eyes on Me. I, I, I got the chance to like listen to this in its entirety yesterday since I never had time to do so to begin with seeing it's two it's a, like a two and a half hour long hip hop double album and I was pleased with it there's like some emotional tracks some tracks that are just about you know sex and stuff tracks about being in the game and all that Tupac was certainly a character and it's it's a shame he's dead he was certainly doing some really interesting things with the, with the genre in terms of in terms of production and uh, flow. He was a lot of charis charisma that uh, we're probably not going to see for a while, except for the new Kendrick Lamar album. But it's still not Tupac. Yeah, more Tom Waits! Yay! Got more Tom Waits. This is a uh, Blood Money, the album that came after Blood Mule Variations. I think something else came out simultaneously. Oh yeah, the, the lyrics. That's cool. I think another album of his came out like simultaneously. I think it's called Alice. That uh, I need to look into at some point. I want to get all the Tom Waits on CD. That's that's gonna be my. That's going to be my goal one day, to get every single Tom Waits studio album on CD. And, um, I'm on the right track. I can't remember, I can't remember how many I have right now. <laughs> Might want to keep mule, mule Variations, even though I got it on final, but... I don't know. I'll make that decision whenever I make that decision. And finally, uh, Siga Ross's Untitled Album. Some people call it the Bracket Album. Comes out of a, yeah, comes out of a string sleeve. It's doesn't really have anything on it. It's like eight tracks long. Set, it goes on seventy minutes, but there's no, there are no official title. There's no official ti official title for this album. No official titles for any of the tracks on the album, and there's no actual lyrics to. The album at all. It's, it's all sung in this made up gibberish language. Volunskir. I think if I'm, if I'm pronouncing that right. Yeah. It's really interesting. Really interesting stuff if you're looking to get into post, post rock ambient music. It's pretty beautiful. Their front man, Yonzi, is probably the, one, of the, one of the most important. Musicians to ever come out of Iceland. The most important, in my opinion, obviously being, you know, Bjork. <laughs> okay, that's that's all my CDs I, I'm able to show you right now. I will do another CD update or a vinyl update whenever I get the opportunity to.